I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Peace, family. Um, I hope everyone is, um, is, is ready for tonight's show because you know how we're always at Happy World. We're like, listen, it ain't, you know, Dr. Renoka Rashidi talked about this a lot. And we 100% is down with him when he said this was that, you know, it wasn't enough just to talk about what you're doing, but you had to do stuff. Okay. Cause you know, that's how we move our race forward is by actually doing stuff. So tonight's show is super special because these are all people that's actually doing stuff. You know, um, so we have models. So we can't go around and say, oh, we don't have any models in the community. No, no, we brought some models here tonight and we're going to be bringing more models all throughout the year because this is so, this is important um, because the, our guests are just regular people like you who are looking like me, like Taki, like everyone. And then we just decided to do something, to listen to our ancestors and to go with it because all of, you know, these, these guests right here are very tapped in to the divine energy, the universe, whatever you want to call it. Okay. <laughs> they are tapped in and it's, um, and it's apparent because of what they're able to produce. Right. So uh, before we bring them on, I just want to just, you know, you guys please like and share and um, comment on this video. That's super important. That's how we, you know, get this algorithm to work with us so we can get our word out to more people. Make sure you are again, liking and sharing the video. Also, um, you know, if you, I don't know if you noticed, but I have a brand new, we have like new merchandise, <laughs> which is so, it's nice. Uh, we, we were able to, to get all our merchandise together before Black, uh, our happy day of, of Black excellence. So I have on one of the hoodies. We never actually had a hoodie before. So this is great. Um, if you, you know, if, if you want to su um, support us and know that anything that you purchase from, from us or download or whatever, it goes right back into our community we were able to be successful with the happy day of black excellence because of people just like you, people who are part of the movement, contributing by buying tickets, by buying merchandise. And it, it, it was a really nice event. We are still, um, we're still high from the amount of love that was just like condensed in Queens, New York. So it was really super nice. Um, and plus all the people in live stream. And we have one of our guests will talk a little bit about that too. Um, but yes, if you want to go ahead, we have the um, the Happy DVD, or you could just stream it, download it. But um, the Happy uh, documentary, you know, we started this film. I, I want to say almost like ten years ago now, um, and it's a two-hour, twelve-minute film about the history of money, okay, and how we created the constructs of money, and we look at, we really analyze like how we, you know, how we are the ones that when you look at the economy uh, and the way that it's presented to us right now, it's because of the work that we did at the now at the Nile Valley, the Hopi. And so our film looks at this and looks at how we, you know, just how the money moved and all the way until where we're, we're at right now, which is in America. Well, we're spread it out, but we contribute one point uh, three trillion dollars to the economy, and we really, at the end of the day, don't have anything to show for it. So we look at that. That's what you know, and that's the basis of our platform, the Happy Movement. It's economic awareness, but it's also economic movement. Um, so please support by, uh, you know, if you haven't seen the film, to check it out. Hit our merchandise page, and also if you want to give a little um, Happy Cash app love, right there is where a dollar sign Happy Film. You know, we got this whole happy love thing from King Simon and uh, peace to King Simon out there. Um, and, uh, he, you know, we went to his show and he talked about people spreading the love. And so that's where we got that from. The happy cash cash app right there. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on these three guests. And this is so nice because each you know, I was just thinking that each each of these people kind of represent an aspect of my life. <laughs> You know, just like how like how I met them. And so first, I'm going to start off with um, Michael Friend. OK, 
Michael, man. How you doing, Michael? <laughs> hey, Felicia. You're like the beginning. Yeah, because it's first <laughs> I first met you. Okay. So first you're yeah. the first person. Then next I've um I met Haki, Haki Ami. Um, I met him in DC. And then lastly, I met r- right here, Goddess Queen Mother Brenda Allen. We were in Kemet together. Indeed. Yeah. So this is going to be great, 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 great. All right, family. All right. So listen, and like I said before, you know, it's not just about talking about doing stuff. You know, it's really about supporting and doing stuff. So these three guests are actually doing stuff. And all throughout the show, they're going to tell you how, you know, because we we understand we can't do everything, right? But there is one thing we can do. And sometimes, you know, you want to do a bunch of different things. And maybe the only thing you can do is send money or send support in some type of way. And all of that is very important. And that's how these, you know, that's how we're able to survive. That's how Hoppy's been able to survive. And, you know, these these uh, organizations have been around for a minute. So I'm pretty sure that's how they've been able to survive too. We're going to talk to them and find out. <laughs> All right. So we're going to first start, ladies. I mean, well, gentlemen and ladies. But we're going to um, first start with um, Goddess Queen Mother Brenda Allen. We're going to let ladies go first. Okay. Yeah. So just introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you. Well, actually, I've changed my name. I've added on Divine goddess queen mother Brenda Allen and I am a former IT training supervisor with the Los Angeles Unified School District. I'm retired. However, I didn't retire without having something to do. So I became, of course, an entrepreneur after I retired from the school district after 25 years. So it has led me to my current a business organization called Ma'at Sankofa, which is uh, an LLC, for-profit business. And I've added the African Learning Temple to it because it will become a mobile classroom. And I will be able to purchase a school bus and travel around the community here in Tampa, Florida and teach our ancient history, cosmology, IT training, and a a plethora of different uh, programs and curriculum, aside from not being dependent on the school district um, for funding, because I don't want to go by their rules and regulations and be governed by what they feel is appropriate curriculum for our our children. So with that, by divine instruction, Mm -hmm. this is what I was told to do after, um, I guess, three weeks after a surgery, I was awakened every morning at about two o'clock in the morning with weeping. I was just crying and I didn't know why this was happening for three weeks straight. And so the spirit said, Brenda, our people are dying and starving from a lack of knowledge. And I'm, I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do about that? And the spirit said, teach, feed the people, feed the people knowledge. So that's when the concept of Ma'at Sankofa came into my my uh, vision and to start this mobile classroom. Okay, okay, just, just wait right there. Okay, that's a yeah. lot of, okay, I'm just trying to think. First you wake up, you know, with, and you know, they're like, they're like, okay, do this. But how did, how did you just say, okay, I'm just gonna do a mobile classroom? Like, how did you get there? You know, was there other things? Well, there, it, there were other things. Of course, I thought, well, I can build a brick and mortar, but that okay. will take a lot of money, a lot of resources, a lot of time, and I didn't have those. But I could purchase a bus and, and travel and be more mobile, and I can be more independent, and I can travel to our people instead of waiting for them to come to 100%. an institution. So uh, there is um, a young uh, queen here in Tampa. She, her name is Candy Lowe, and she does the Black Business Bus Tour. 
and she uh, gathers people on the bus and takes them to black owned businesses around the city. So the idea of being mobile was from that concept of her black business bus tour. So I'm able to raise the money, purchase the bus, do the curriculum and provide the training and teaching. So you that's what? what I'm working on. Yeah, that is wonderful because I think about my kids there. I know in um, when they were a little bit younger, like elementary school um, age, that there's like uh, there's a science bus it just came. It would always come like to the school and, and they had, the, you know, they, they brought the kids out class by class. They did experiments and, you know, yeah. so, OK, that's not OK. So now when do you expect for this to be um, up and running? And how can well, we support Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, young queen. I'm uh, hopeful that I will be able to purchase the bus by next month. Okay. And then I have a young lady who's an artist, actually. I've asked her to do a scale model bus, a little toy bus. But the facade of Queen Hachatsup's temple will be wrapped on the outside of the bus. And you know, we were there. Yes. In Egypt, right. Yes, I was just about to say, like, yeah, I traveled with um with uh, uh Queen Mother Brenda Allen. She came with us mm -hmm. last year in May, in May of last year to Kemet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was hot. It was hot and uh you were a trooper. <laughs> you. Thank let, you. No, everyone's laughing, but mm -hmm. yo, let me tell you, it was a hundred and like some days it was like 114 degrees outside. And we had some elders traveling with us. We were like, we felt like we we made these elder, elders do things that was so crazy that at the end of the trip, we actually gave them a little something because we were like, <laughs> survive like your life, you know, with us. It was so hot, and you guys never complained. You just kept it was it going. was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Okay. And I, you know, I'll turn 70 on March 8th and to have been able to travel and go, I, I tell you, I started my Sankofa in 1992, meaning that that's when I was told to look back for the truth and for uh, an understanding of what our people did and the legacy. So that's when I started learning and and reading and following with the scholars that we actually traveled with and um joined ASCAP and all of that but it was three decades 30 years it took me to get to Egypt and to Kemet to see what I had been studying all those years to see the sphinx wow the, in in Hark I can't pronounce it, but I know the things is not the proper Ketty. name, but <laughs> yeah, Haru Yamaketi. <laughs> I was thinking uh, Haru Emoteti. Okay. Yeah, um her, wait, Haru uh, M Aketi. Okay. That's right. And so it's that right. was phenomenal to be yeah. able to walk into the temples and and I actually channel the spirit of Queen Hashatsu. Ooh. So the the exterior of the bus will have her her temple on it on the inside of the bus will depict the hieroglyphs. It would be like you're entering into one of our pyramids with the papyra and the hieroglyphs. And the ceiling of the bus will depict our solar system. So we can teach oh. cosmology and astrology and astronomy. And the, the bus driver, when the physical bus driver leaves the seat, then a hologram will come up of what? Imhotep or Queen Hatshepsut to okay. welcome those onto our bus. Okay, okay, okay. That's the vision. Mm -hmm. So you talking about like a hologram? Like, didn't didn't we mm -hmm. see a hologram of Michael Jackson or was it Biggie or somebody? Remember they brought a um, a hologram on stage. So you're gonna wow. How do you create a hologram? I'll get us. Uh, I'll get one of the college students mm. to create it. I'm sure it's digital. It can be done. I've seen examples of it. They have it at the Dolly Museum here in uh, St. Pete, uh, Florida. So it. I will have a hologram that would be motion detected. 
So whenever someone comes, it will come up and welcome and greet the students or the community onto the bus. Okay, I'm telling y'all now, Hoppy will be in the house with the first movie. We're going to be on that first ride to the um, <laughs> to Tampa. That's dope. Okay. <laughs> Right, thank you. Now, no. you know, you're not going anywhere. Just stay right there. We're going to. Um, I will. Thank you for allowing me some time to talk to you about my idea and concept. Yeah. No, no, we ain't done finished talking. We're going to, I want to just get a little bit so everybody can get a little taste and then we're going to kind of do, uh, I got some questions for all you guys. Okay. okay. Uh, the hologram. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's what's up. <laughs> all right, Haki, how you feeling? Oh, Haki. All right, beautiful. I'm sorry. Um, let me get out of here. Yes, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Well, Akwaba, uh, everybody, Habari, uh, Brother Haki Ami, the Success Scholar. So I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. We refer to it as Tubman City. So born and raised here, but I did leave uh, the Baltimore area. Uh, I, I consider it escaping. I went into the military initially, United States Navy, and there I became conscious and aware. Uh, so began reading a significant amount of books on a diverse amount of topics. I was in the Norfolk area and uh, life has taken me in many different directions. Uh, so I'm an author, speaker, organizer, and we are celebrating Black History Month. And so I have to quote Carter G. Woodson and say that we need more workers. So ultimately I consider myself a worker for the people and for the community. Uh, I am also the president of the Teaching Artists Institute. And we have been, you know, I came on board uh, there about two, two, three years ago. Uh, I knew the founder, Sister Kim Poole, for some years before that, and I was doing my uh, work in many different spaces uh, in the Baltimore area in certain political spaces as well. So I sit on some different boards in the Baltimore and in the state of Maryland, but many people knew me from the cultural community, the, co the conscious community, if you will, doing, uh, you know, marketing, selling, books actually i sold a significant amount of other authors books and i co-authored a book a few years later and and so uh about some years ago actually two three years ago when i became the president of the teaching on this institute that was actually my first time going to africa uh, going to tanzania and so uh, from there we did some other um, conferences in tanzania South Africa and a few months ago in Kenya. And so that as well as what we offer as well, we working in the schools now, um, like last year, we took 31 young people, Baltimore City school students, mostly from the city uh, throughout 10 states throughout the South for what we call a freedom rides, uh, duplicating the, the historical freedom rides of, of uh, you know, core Congress of Racial Equality and other civil rights groups mm -hmm. from the 1960s. So I'll just open and close with and say that, you know, one of the particulars, as I experienced uh, Africa uh, for the first time, but, you know, people kind of thought I already been, but uh, no, I did not. But one of the things that that we had the vision for is that many africans who are still you know coming to the united states they they don't really get a a full gist of of our history and our culture and so uh to that extent for what it's worth is, is in terms of what is actually a black uh people in american culture we thought that uh, outside of the young people, the youth going on a freedom rides that we would target being this close to the DC, many of the continental Africans to actually learn the history here since they're going to be here. And so we, we, we have a strong outreach. And so this year coming in June, 
tentatively we have uh, perhaps some Ethiopians and some Kenyans that may be coming with the tour uh, throughout the South. We're going to 10 different states this time as well. And we have 30 this time. So I'll just open with that. So that's, okay. that's what we have going on. Okay, so let me just get this straight, uh, straight, make sure I understand. So the teaching artist, so there's like a group of you guys who who you also, you bring, you bring students to right. Tanzania, to these other places in Africa, or do you, or you well, do all your, like, or is that like a separate entity when you're traveling to, um, to Tanzania? No, no, so the goal, well, yeah, so there's Thai tours, the, that was the goal. The goal ultimately has been to bring students, and yes, we did do what's called a Summer Learning Institute, where we had a few young people uh, that, that did come to Tanzania either like in 2020 and last year, we did have some uh, more actually came in 2022 with us to Tanzania for a summer learning institute where we work with three different universities actually in the south, southern Tanzania and Bagamoyo, and Bea, Bagamoyo and then in Arusha. So we've been, uh, as well as working with students there, trying to create like a cultural connective connectivity between uh, the, the Africans as well as, I'm sorry, the, the, the various regions of Tanzania, as well as those that came with us. And we also come with, you know, some teaching artists, some professors that are, you know, here in the United States, and we kind of learn from the professors there as well. So that, yes, so we, that's part mm. of the goal as well too. Yes. Okay. So you're okay. Okay. So I, I like that. So you're, you're connecting, um, you know, African-Americans with the, uh, that are in the diaspora with Africans on, on the, on the continent. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Through the, through the university systems, um, the we, we, okay. We see and know that many if we don't get the opportunities to go to Africa. So, you know, sort of like some years ago, there was a Philadelphia organization called the Breakfast Club. I'm sorry, wait a minute. The Dessert Club. Dessert <laughs> some Club. years ago. Yeah, the uh, Dessert so, Club. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think there's so, still, yeah, that's what you know, that's with, is that with Jabari Ozazi? Like he, I, like I, I know he was, he was connected to them as well. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know it's another brother. He's, I believe he's transitioned. Yes. But I know, or did they go back? Yes, so, but, but yes, I know Shabai was, you know, in, in that space as well with them. So, you know, just looking at uh, that and, and being from Baltimore, many of you may be aware of this, this HBO special. It was called The Boys of Baraka. Uh, many of those young, men that they so they took some young men from I, I believe they were mostly Baltimore uh, but they took them to Kenya and they lived for like two three months during the summer or something I, I'm not sure how long they actually stayed there but you know so we look at those you know models like that and I got part of the you know it's it's, it's just funny how I read something from 20 years ago like Haki met a buddy uh, Third World Press up in Chicago. I read his book, Black Men Single Dangerous Obsolete, some years ago. And, I, and one of the things he mentioned is that we have to get, you know, some of these young people out of these urban environments to get like a like a break from their uh, mm. from the chaos, if you will. So, you know, looking at that model, I feel like, you know. Africa is, is certainly a model, but, you know, understanding, you know, reasonably and practically speaking, sometimes, you know, may not be able to get all of them out, you know, in different spaces. So we have a sort of a three prong uh, strategy to, you know, local little outreaches and then like, you know, statewide and then the African uh, diaspora strategy. So, yes. Okay. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, I tell you, once you you leave mm -hmm. one time, then you you it's like you are 
you, you start to understand your your possibilities. <laughs> you know, like you, you're like, oh, hey, wait, I just thought it was just like right here. But no, you know, it's so important to um, to travel. Yeah, that's what's up. All right. right, right. Okay. And you yes. know, right. yes, yeah, so a family, you know, I met Haki. We were on a tour in D.C. together and mm-hmm. um, you know, we we would just started hanging ever since then. And he mm-hmm. came um, to the One Africa Power Detroit, and Unity yes, yes. in Detroit. And, and um, yes, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to let me just tell you you uh from there we did um brother greg mckenzie his daughter and his his mother came with us to tanzania so uh, in 2022 or so was it 21 uh, i'm sorry my these no, years, 21 i believe 21. uh they came with, well yeah, it, yeah 22 thank you <laughs> so yes they did come with us to tanzania from that conference and so you know that was amazing mm-hmm. opportunity and we actually have some elders in detroit as well so it was it was you know strategically worthwhile for us to you know come uh you know get up to the midwest much but you know that was a good opportunity for us to you know just tap into different parts of africa and and i feel and that's one of the reasons i went that many uh we're not as tapped into the East African region as, as uh, not to say we should be, but understanding the historic of the, 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 the Arab, the Arab slave trade, you know, comes out of Bagamoyo. Many individuals, uh, we, we don't really discuss a whole lot of that history as much as we talk about, you know, the transatlantic slave trade. So, you know, really it just tapped into that a little more. And that, that was strategic. Of, of of us uh, working in Tanzania. Yeah, you know what? Listen, there is so much. There is so much um, uh, history that we need to still uncover and get to the masses. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of times when we talk about Africa, mm-hmm. there's like a, a couple, mm-hmm. like five spots that everyone talks about and visits. But there's like it's it's 54 countries. It's like 54, mm-hmm. right? 54. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's so mm-hmm. much. And, and the other, is, you know, one of the things I like mm-hmm. when I sit down. with with uh, Professor um, James Small is that he's able to like really connect these countries with each other mm-hmm. and talk about the migration patterns and talk about, mm-hmm. you know, how, you know, we were doing, you know, something mm-hmm. over here, but that thing mm-hmm. we were doing over here came from over here and it was called this, like he's really able to start connecting those. So this, yeah, that, that's what's up. Yeah, I got to get to um, to Tanzania. It's, it's, first of all, it's beautiful. Oh my God, the, the um, Zanzibar. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Earth, Wind, and Fire actually wrote a. Earth, Wind, and Fire has like a 14 minute um, song called Zanzibar. Really? It's 14 oh, minutes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh, you know what? We got Michael Fred here who's going to be. Yeah, I'm going to let him tell it. But um, <laughs> I'm going to bring him on next. So just, you know, hang tight, Haki. So Michael Friend. So, you know, Michael Friend, mm-hmm. he is a. He's, he gave me my first acting job ever. <laughs> and I was so nervous mm, that wow. it was my turn to talk. Yeah, it was my turn to say my little line. I had a lot of lines, but I said every line in the whole entire play <laughs> right there. The guy asked me, my, the co-actor said, said one thing. Oh, wow. I said every single line. <laughs> and he looked at me like, okay. And I was like, and that was it. I was just mm. so, I was petrified. But I want to, you know, thank you, uh, Michael, for... Um, <laughs> allowing me to um you know to find you know, to really find out who i was like on stage with you so you know yeah shout out to um my, i don't have applause mm-hmm. i need to get applause on this platform yeah. <laughs> i would be giving you applause right now so tell everybody right. who you are and what you're doing yeah so we we've come uh full circle let me say it's a pleasure to be on with uh divine goddess queen mother and my keys is uh, I'm I'm very honored, and we come full circle. Um, you know, I'm from, I'm from Philadelphia originally, uh, a student of Arthur Hall, and um, started drumming with him back in 1966, 67. Uh, you know, I was seven, eight, nine years old, <sighs> and um, who knew that? You know, I'll be 65 in December. Who knew the drum would really sort of be my beacon 
into the path of theater and spoken word and and uh, all the things that um, I've been doing all these many years. And it's funny because um, in 1984, I started this group Soul in Motion. It was called, you know, Soul in Motion Players. But now we're affectionately known as Soul in Motion. But, you know, having met Felicia, oh God, it had to be sometime in the 90s. Um, and for this play that was inspired by Tony Browder, of all people. Um, so mm -hmm. I heard him being interviewed on the uh, local channel WPFW here in DC, talking about his book from the Browder Files. And I just, I ran out, got the book and read it, I don't know, two days maybe, and um, got inspired to write this, this play, We Are Africa. And um, went to a college conference mm -hmm. I was selling the show and I was upstairs, upstairs in my hotel at night, typing the script. <laughs> wow. Writing the script and I'm marketing it to the colleges for tours, um, you know, during that, during that, that stretch. And, you know, and discovering this whole Egyptology uh, study from Tony Browder and, you know, auditioning people and got a headshot um, young lady, Afro gal. And I have to say, <laughs> I do have that email address. Oh my gosh! You know, people who come to auditions, they don't necessarily look like their headshots, and um, so it was a wonderful headshot. Mm -hmm. And then so you walked in, and you you were Afro gal right off the paper. I mean, it was incredible what you mm -hmm. see. Of <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. gosh! So we were we were we were journey in that journey together. I mean, learning about it learning about the names. Um, it was, you know, it was incredible time. Toured that show, ironically, for 13 years. Um, you know, so 13 years, right out of the book of Tony Brown at 13, you know, the power to number 13. Yeah. And then transitioned after that into African dance and drum. Um, and for a while there, I was rehearsing, I had two rehearsals. I would rehearse with the cast for We Are Africa, and then I would rush across town and rehearse with the dancers and drummers. And that was sort of our our transition time uh, as we transitioned in that. Never thought one time that you know, I was launching into an area that uh, was already sort of pretty well packed here in DC with um, Conqueron and Koyaba and uh, Wose wow. and so many others. Yeah, Melvin Deal. And, uh, you know, just jumped right in and carved out a, a space for ourselves, reinventing ourselves. And uh, this year is uh, our 39th anniversary of, uh, of existence for, wow. for the nonprofit. So excited about that, almost four decades. Um, and as I said, growing up in Philly, really being exposed to dance and drum, um, it took a minute after graduating from Howard trying to figure out what am I gonna do? I got this degree in communications and what am I going to do? And I, four years of trying to do communications, I said, you know what? I grew up doing this in Philly, and this has really it made a difference in my life. And I think we could make a difference in a lot of young lives. Uh, and I think we have. I think we've touched a lot of young spirits, um, you know, older spirits as well through, mm -hmm. through the activity. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much, I think we're, what, what, what the niche is for soul emotion is that <laughs> I, I, I coined, I guess I coined the phrase of saying, you know, we're not trying to be more African than the Africans, you know, because the phrase mm -hmm. of African American is very important to me. I think, you know, being born in America, understanding the lineage to Africa, I've been there twice, um, but understanding what influences we have upon ourselves as far as you know, we, we are sort of a melting pot of many different cultures and we can and we can sort of uh, blend and morph into these other things musically. So, you know, as a musician, I can, you know, I can kind of play Brazilian. I can play, you know, samba. I can play reggae. I can, you know, disco. I can do, you know, djembe. You know, we, we can do a many things. You know, we shouldn't have to try to put ourselves in a box. And that's who we are. So, um, and so I, you know, I really sort of cherish that idea that we do have, we do have sort of a culture, and, you know, a history and a future. As Felicia probably remembers, we have the saying that we, 
we would have this, the college students say, we are Africa, African-American. We have a culture, a history, and a future. Yes. To understand, yeah. So that was a sort mm -hmm. of a mantra that we would pass along. Yeah, so um, mm -hmm. family, this is, this is um, I, I got to tell this little story. As I'm, I'm looking through these pictures, and um, let me put up, um, put up your website. So, you know, part of the We Are Africa when, um, when Michael was, um, tour, you know, when, when he was doing this play, there's a part in there, there's like, there's three characters. Uh, yeah, there's three characters, but there's like a main character, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember I started off and I was just like one of the, the um, you know, like a, one of the regular characters. But then finally, you know, there was a point where before I became like the main character, they it's like in the middle of this play, which is, it has everything in this play. Mm -hmm. but, um, there's like this whole dance ensemble, that this dancing that happens, right? And so I was like, you know what? I am ready to be the dancer, right? <laughs> so I call myself getting ready. And now, now keep in mind, I ain't never mm -hmm. took dance. Okay? I'm not Beyonce. I'm not, um, I'm trying to think about some, some other famous, um, Answers. I'm not any of those people, but I am Felicia thinking that I will be able to pull off this whole dance ensemble that a trained dancer can do. So I, I'm like this. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, Michael, I think I could do it. And I'm like auditioning. Now he sat there and watched me jump around the room because I was jumping. <laughs> You're laughing. It's okay. I was jumping to put my arms up. I don't know what I was doing. Right. So you know, and the thing I like about Michael is that he's going to be truthful. He's not going to be mean, but he's, he is going to be truthful. So he's not going to let you think something's going on or, you know, you can when it's not happening. Right. So he was basically like this, this is not happening, you know. And so he brought in a trained dancer. OK, this is her right here. And in the beginning, I, I was I was so Ooh. tight. I was like, what, what does she have that I don't besides like dance? It, it, mm. besides, like, knowing how to dance. Right. She actually <laughs> leads the dancers. You know, now, I mean, I love this woman, okay? What she's been able to do, um, you know, with with all, the, you know, with the dancers and keeping everybody together and teaching them dances and doing everything. Like, I, I'm like, okay, she's literally a legit dancer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can see me. Oh, man, I had it. I had, I practiced some music. I don't know what I was doing. I tell you to be young. <laughs> Just, well, you know, I think what you were doing was you were really exhibiting the power that you were going to possess and the presence you were going to possess in what you're doing now. And so what I saw in you was exactly what you're doing now in, in, the, in the place that you are. I mean, who knew, right? We, we were just we were just out yeah. there, you know, Ivan Van Sertum, I mean, we These were names that we, you know, we were speaking and. I'm just, I'm just so proud of you, and uh, you know, to, to use the word divine, it's like it's come, it comes full circle. It's like look at Felicia, look at Hoppy. Who knew that that encounter and and all that energy that you were given was going to launch you into where you are now? And that's and that's that's amazing. That's that that is truly divine. It is, you know, and I, I tell you, oh man, I was so sad when I moved to New York because I was like, man, what won't be able to do? We are Africa because that, that play, like that locked me into like the conscious community. I mean, just being, I didn't even know that, that this, this whole, like a whole entity existed. I knew how I felt about being a black person. I felt like, you know, um, you know, I love myself. I love him. Like I, I, all of that, but I didn't know why. There was no. I, I couldn't answer the why. I couldn't. You know, I couldn't talk about I, I, I've been Van Sertima, and I, I definitely didn't know anything about you know traveling to Egypt or you know uh, the pyramids. Like I didn't. I didn't have that language. But through We Are Africa is really where I started to like learn that, and then later on, a couple mm -hmm. years later, that I meet Taiki, and, and the rest is history. I'm here now. <laughs> I think you know, like this early on. So that's that's what's mm. up. Thank you. Yeah. Nothing yeah. happens by happenstance. That's one hundred percent. So now it's all divine intervention. It is. It, oh my! I tell you, 
because I just think about how um, how I met each and you know each and every one of you guys, and it's literally been by divine intervention. Like you, you know, it's like you can't even you can't even script mm -hmm. it, you know. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys in terms of when you're you, you're building because all of you guys are building in, it's institutional building, right? Why do you think mm -hmm. building or do you think building institutions is important for Black folks? Well, yeah. I do. I think it's it's the ultimate in importance. Um, I tell you what's happening here in Tampa, Florida. There are 45 failing schools in the public school system here. And of mm. course, they're in our Black communities. Now, they're charting and uh, tracking reading and math scores, but there's also, you know, this lack of knowing our history, ancient history in particular, and African American history even more so. And Governor mm -hmm. DeSantis here has declared that there should not be an, mm -hmm. an advanced placement uh, program for African American studies. He says it's of no value. Mm -hmm. And so they don't even mm -hmm. want to teach American, African American history here in those public mm -hmm. schools. So there's a huge gap. So I, Ma'at Sankofo, will bridge a little bit of that gap. That's the goal and the focus. If I have, if I only reach one student, that's important enough for them to know, maybe I can share this information, this knowledge, this wisdom with my fellow, uh, you know, friend at school and get them involved and come out to this unique bus mm -hmm. and learn more and more and more. So it's of ultimate importance. And our children do not know our ancient history. You ask them about Imhotep, they have no clue. No, they have no clue. No, no, they they have don't no. know, you know, uh, Ursa Ma'at Rasatep and Ramesu Ra'aman. They don't know who these people are and that they existed and they're real. Yeah. So I want to bring that, I want to bring our ancestors even more closer to our community, not just our students, but our uh, uh, adults as well. And that's what Ma'at, mm -hmm. Ma'at of course stands for truth. Sankofa means to look back. So we're gonna look back for the truth and then bring it forward. So they know what the future looks like. And we'll start the curriculum by teaching the seven principles of Ma'at mm -hmm. on this bus. So, yeah, family, listen, go to go. You can go to GoFundMe and type in um, uh, backward slash one two zero four eight seven six seven C three or just go to GoFundMe and type in Maat Sankofa and um, mm -hmm. Miss Goddess uh, Brenda Allen's, um, you know, information will come up and please support. So, you know, like you may not be able to travel down to Tampa or you may not be able to help her build the hologram. OK, that's yeah. OK. But you can give a couple of dollars to help, mm -hmm. you know, to help get this, you know, get this going and get this bus. This is fire. This is nice. You know, when you're talking about wrapping a bus, I think about mm -hmm. if you visit um, Infudishi Juhuti, miss, he's um, he's now um, uh, part of this museum, the Genesis Museum in Harlem. And when, as soon as you come in, there's, you can't see any wall. Everything yeah. is, everything is wrapped. So you feel like you're walking into a temple. Yes. You think, if, if you just like, oh, let me look up here. It's, it's wrapped. <laughs> like, you know, everything is, yeah, and he has like these beautiful um, Egyptian um, statues all around. It's really nice. You well, know, where is this? Where is that? This, this is uh, the Genesis Museum. It is on 126th street. It's the address is 504. West okay. 126th Street, and it's in between Amsterdam and um, and what is that? And Broadway. Yeah, it's right next to the police precinct. <laughs> Go figure. Okay. <laughs> it's nice. Okay. You know. Remind me. We go. No, remind me of that because we'll we'll be up there. Um, we have a delegation coming up there okay. uh, next month. You know, to to the United Nations. Uh, so. I will, oh, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm looking for operations like that. So we'll, we'll let you know when we, oh, when we're 100%. coming. 
one hundred. Well, in the middle of November, so you know, right, right, for okay. sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, yes. So, um, so yeah. So the institution building is one hundred percent needed in uh, Florida. Anyone else want to add on to mm -hmm. the importance of institutions? Sure, I'll 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 say something real quick. But first, let me just say, uh, Brother Michael, I, I definitely have seen your work in this area. I, I was look, looking at your name. I was like, like I I know that name from somewhere. But when you said said DC, I was like, okay, I I definitely have have seen your work or your name a few places. Uh, but I appreciate that. Appreciate you know hearing your story. I've only I've I've just been familiar with Conquer Run for so many. Uh, years and I, I think I went there like this summer. They had a uh, something, the 40th year, I think, or something. So mm -hmm. I was there for that. But what I what I'll say in terms of institution building is, unfortunately, we are not defining the narrative and what an institution is able to do is protect uh, your culture as well as develop what I consider, I, I call it the three C's, the the, cult, the consciousness and the character. And unfortunately, and you know, let me just quote my elder, um, Nana, well, Dr. Patricia Newton, she has a, another name, but mm -hmm. she said something to the effect. And I, 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 was, I was blessed to, you know, say a few words at her funeral. And I know you, um, I've done some work with her, Felicia, of course, yeah, she's in but, hockey. Um, yeah, she's but in hockey. she she said something. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but she she said something when, you know, and I'm, I'm a paraphrase, but she said, if I don't care how many African names you have, how many uh, how many times you've been to Africa, how many books you read, if it's not about developing character in our children everything else is mm. for naught. And that was her, you know, comments I interviewed her years ago. But, you know, the, the context that we have to be practical in terms of our development of our community. And this is where I'm trying to to be, you know, what, what I call African centered, meaning centered in our community and understanding that not everybody is going to have they, they, there's going to be different levels of of consciousness, right? Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of the appreciation and understanding of who we we are, right? But we have to get people to a level of of, of respecting our humanity, right? And yes. that, you know, like Mama uh, Goddess Queen Mother said, you know, if people aren't, you know surviving you know and then that they're not developing the basic things to survive to live off of we got to understand that we got to hit them with some basic things you know that people need and this is where getting back to the institutions and this is where mm -hmm. uh, being centered is because you can protect the culture from the perversion of Euro insanity, shall I say? So, uh, so I'll just say that this is Indeed. where you know developing uh, character. Yeah, so, I like you. that. Euro insanity. So, I'm taking a tree class, y'all. So I'm sorry, not tree. I'm taking my Swahili class. So if I say a Swahili word, just give me a hand clap because I, it's, it's coming okay. to me. Just, well, yeah, let me tell you, stuff. hand clap because uh, hand clap. Too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, so you know what's so um, I'm striving, y'all. <laughs> right. So, like when I'm thinking about uh, you guys as uh, just what you're building, um, and I want I want to ask you this question, Michael, and and everyone can answer. You know, because you have one of the, the longest building. I mean, you have one of the longest. Um, uh, I mean, your organization has been in existence, you said, 39 years. Yes. 39 years. So what has been wow, the most challenging really piece of what you have been able to do? And what's been the most rewarding piece? So I, I think the most challenging piece is um, 
you know, is get is 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 getting people to be open enough to accept our history. Mm. Um, and mm. I say get people, I mean, our people. I'm not talking about the worldwide, I'm talking about just our people uh, because other cultures embrace us because they understand the richness of yeah. African culture, right? But when we talk to our own people, uh, because of the misinformation, and the brainwashing, mm. all that has happened, you know, it, 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 you know, it's like we, we don't want to hear it. Mm. We really don't want to hear it. So, um, so that so that alone drives the institution piece that you're asking about, because you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So you can't go out and be discouraged that nobody listened today. You know, you might get 10 people to listen tomorrow mm. and then you might not get anybody else to listen for the rest of the year. But you got to dig in and be mm -hmm. committed to it. Long range, mm -hmm. institutional, yes. institutional knowledge, institutional, yeah. you know, commitment. And so, you know, I, I extended that whole concept of uh, institutionalizing to, because at some point now you have to start developing legacy building. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the one of the many years that we had one of our anniversaries, that was the whole theme about legacy building. Because and I think that comes with age, you know. Uh, you know, Queen Mother mentioned uh, her age. And so at some age, chronolo chronological age, you start to sense that you got more years behind you than you have ahead of you. And that sense of urgency of starting to build something mm -hmm. to leave behind. You know, how are you making this planet better than it was when you got here? You know, that whole concept. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. because look, look, look at us now, Felicia. Wow, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. here we are, and you're interviewing me. <laughs> you know, on, on yeah. this, planet, this, is, this is such a beautiful thing mm -hmm. that sees that we planted. Yeah, you know, but we gotta we gotta mm -hmm. be committed to it. We got it. We have to see the story all the way to the end. You just can't read a couple chapters and then say, you know, now I, I know how the book ends. You know what? Let me tell you, you ain't never lied about that because <laughs> you know, like when we're you know we're sitting here, we're trying to like put two pennies together. And I, you know, when I was thinking about uh, just this institution building, which Hoppy is moving into, right? And I think about. You know, there's so many days where we're just like, oh, gosh, we don't know how we're going to be able to afford to do this, <laughs> you know, and but you have to you can't just be like, well, I just no, mm -hmm. won't do it. Like, no, you have people counting on you. And but the other piece is that, you know, literally your ancestors came to you and said, hey, I need for you to do this. So you can't like disappoint them. Okay. Even, you know, you're going to be tired. You can barely keep your little self together. But at the end of the day, like they gave you a job to do, you have to do it. Yes. <laughs> no mm -hmm. matter what, you know. Yes. And so that's mm -hmm. I tell you, building something it ain't for the weak of heart. And I I don't know I and you definitely need some uh, you need a team you need or you need I don't know if you you definitely need a team that's helpful but you mm -hmm. do need like a one person, you know <laughs> that's like I got you. You know, like, come on, we're going we gonna to get this done. Like, that's super important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the whole village, it takes a village. You know, yeah. I live by that, yeah. you know. And um, and it's funny when you were just talking about that, because the thing is, it is the village concept. But someone posted on social media, and I know I'm probably going to screw this up, but the, the basic concept was what you have to really be aware of is that, um, that some, some people – will come on to your ship and they would prefer to sink your ship if they can't be the captain. Mm. 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 That was, that's how the, you know, the phrase went. And that is mm. so true. So not only do you have to be committed, you got to be so committed that when those people get into your space, you know, they can tell you how it's supposed to be. They can take and they just want to sort of knock you off your mission. And you got, mm -hmm. and that's, that's when you get paid the big bucks to do, to be the leader. 
to be the director, you to stand in there and say, hey, you're talking about ancestors. You say, this is my divine mission. Uh -huh. and I'm committed to it, wrong, uh -huh. right, or whatever, but this is what yeah. I'm where I'm here, this is what I was put here, mm -hmm. and I can't waver from that because other every you you'll be wavering from it every day. The next day you yeah. wake up, somebody else can say, "No, you should go this way." Mm -hmm. next day, oh, oh yeah, no, 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 I think you should go this way. Yeah, and you know, and those mm -hmm. people, because let me tell you, the little people come. There's always like one or two. Like when we were doing um, Happy Black Excellence, even when we did you know um, the Power and Unity. It's always somebody there, right when the activity is happening. <laughs> They're gonna tell you, well, "Did you think to do blah blah blah?" Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Like we're we're actually in it right now. Like that's mm -hmm. nice, you know that you that you have those thoughts. That's something that maybe in the collaborative phase, we could have had a conversation about, but now we're actually in it. And, you know, I don't even really know you and you're kind of giving your two cents. I didn't ask for it, mm -hmm. you know, and you just but you have to be, you can't like mm -hmm. say it in that way, but you, you almost have to be like, okay. It's like you said, it just has to be like an aardvark. It just has to, the water just has to roll off your back and you just keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These, these cats will try to take you down. I tell you, <laughs> I take you down. Yeah, um, yeah. What about you, um, uh, Queen Mother? What What has been your uh, most challenging, you know, piece trying to um, well, get together this bus? The most challenging right now is building that tribe, right, and making sure that those that are that are a part of this concept and a part of this project are just as enthusiastic as I am about it. So yeah. when I speak to people, yeah. in fact, um, the, the picture that you see behind me, the painting, that belongs to one of my board members. His name is Calvin Angel. And I met Calvin Angel quite ironically at the All Black National Convention in Orlando. And oh. that's where I ran into Taki. Yeah, yeah boy spot. And his vendor booth was mm. there. And I had already signed up for Hobby. Mm. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So it's all by divine intervention. So yeah. I met Calvin Angel. And I, in just a few minutes, I gave him this concept of this bus, the facade, the inside, the you know, short curriculum. He's like, oh my God, that's such a unique idea. He says, I want to support you in any way that I can. So I asked him to come on as a board member, and he agreed to do that. He left the painting there in the hotel. And as we talked, he says, would you do me a favor? He says, can you go to Orlando and pick the picture up and just keep it? <laughs> you know, the artist was, he did that during the convention, this, this oh, whole picture wow. of Jay. And so I said, sure, I'd love to go and get it. So it's hanging there proudly. And uh, so he keeps in touch. We keep in touch as board members. He's given me lots of ideas. He's uh, vice president of the Muscular Dystrophy Association. Okay. And so he's been around fundraising. And so, you know, the ch again, the challenge is getting people to see the vision feel it, be enthusiastic. That's the challenging part, but I, I'm patient with it. Mm -hmm. And I know that the ancestors who I speak their names every day are bringing that individual to mm -hmm. this organization yes. just for the purpose of being able to feed the people that are starving and dying from a lack of knowledge. Because if it wasn't so, they would not have told me that in the middle of the night, right? So uh, that's the challenging part. The rewarding part will be when I can touch the lives of one person, 50 people, 100 mm. people, when I can travel to Detroit with a bus, when I can travel to New York with a bus, have a fleet of buses, yeah, one I'm in every state. I'm thinking, I need a fleet. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking fleet. Like, I don't think the one in the from Florida. I think I like the fleet idea, you know, one in each, you know. That's the long term goal before the brick and mortar. And yeah. then I also want to challenge, mm -hmm. challenge uh, channel the spirit of Dr. Booker T. Washington mm -hmm. and the Tuskegee Institute mm -hmm. because 
he made a difference in the lives of our people. And I want to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So that will be the rewarding part. So I keep in close contact with Dr. Ken Harris as well. Yes. Yeah, I was about to say. So yeah. Those connections are, are the rewarding part, the networking and coming to those conferences mm -hmm. to meet people like Chungalia that I met in Detroit at the conference and Kalia Baker who flew on the airplane with me to Kemet. Yes. You know, so those are the rewards that I get. Yeah, you know, um, it's so important um, because I hear you talking a lot of, and this is the same thing that, um, that uh, Itaiki talks a lot about. I actually asked him this question um, on the panel at the Black Excellence conference, I said, what was most inspiring about, you know, you making this uh, film, Hoppy? And he was like, it was the relationships, the relationship yes. building, like everything mm -hmm. we we have, like I'm Michael sitting here because of a relationship we had, mm -hmm. you know, 30 years ago. Like, that's wild. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. same with Taiki and with all of you guys. It's like, yes. you know, as I said here, and you know, I was telling Taiki, I said, we got to do a show. We got to show people doing stuff. And he was like, well, who are you going to have on there? And I was like, Okay, and I just thought about like people who I know who are doing doing stuff, you know. And I was like, right here, yeah. I was like, I don't even know what Haki does, but Haki is everywhere, and he always is talking about with some other people coming. So I'm like, you know what? We gotta have Haki up there. I know, mm -hmm. I know what um, what Michael's doing because I've been a part of it. I've been part of yeah. the people he was trying to reach, and then I know, you know. I'm talking to you and and the bus and and plus I want you to talk about this hologram because I think that is such a cool. <sighs> But you know what? I was having a thought when you were talking about the bus is that once you get the first bus going, then what you're doing, you're just going to institutions like, hey, do you want to sponsor a bus? And now we have the Hoppy, we have the Hoppy Mayotte Sankofa bus. You know, and like whoever contributes, that's a bus. You know, it's, Indeed. it's a dedicated so bus. You know, like, I mean, like that's really how you you start to um you know build this bad boy out. So yeah, this is gonna be absolutely yeah, it's gonna be nice. Um, what about you, Haki? What's been most challenging for you and rewarding? Well, first let me ask that. How how big is this bus, Mama? No, no, no let, let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bus that I have in mind is a regular seventy-seven okay. passenger school bus. But I will gut it out. Okay. okay, okay and okay. what I got from okay. what I got from um, Infudishi Jehudimus when we were in Egypt, he says we have to discard this whole European design of education. You know, the classroom mm. style, sitting in chairs and rows, who's the smartest in the front and who's not so in the, you know, that kind of thing. We taught in circles. Our ancestors taught in circles, so the interior of the bus will be cyc cyclical or in circles so that the front part, the instructor can give their lecture. There'll be a big screen TV there so that they can do their presentations. The middle part of the bus will be uh, laptop workstations so that we could teach computer literacy and cellular telephony. And the back part of the bus will be our resource library. So all of the back part will have all of our scholars' works. Uh, Dr. Ben, Dr. You know, hey, uh, Asa Hillier, Dr. Clark, all of our resource material will be there. And then we'll connect it to a bookstore so that mm -hmm. those that want to purchase books. And um, uh, Michael, when you talked about Tony Browder's book, was that the Nile Valley uh, contributions to civilization? Was yep. that the book that, okay, that's the first book I picked up when I started my Sankofa. And I won't take much time, but I've also started a Ma'at Sankofa study group using that same book and material. Mm -hmm. And it's online. I do it uh, twice a month. And we are going through that book, and I'm enlightening some people that have had college education, but that piece was missing, and they're like, oh, my God, I didn't know. I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. So I, I can touch a lot more people when I could travel around, and I'm so excited about that. 
Yeah, I'm excited about this class. Yeah. <laughs> no. no yeah. And I, every time yeah. I think, every time so, I hear Sanko. Um, yeah, and, and Martin. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Felicia. No, no, I was just saying, every no, time no, I no. hear so, Sanko. I mean, no, I, I. Right, right. You think about the bookstore in DC <laughs> or the movie, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think about the movie and the bookstore. I think about Haile Garima. Like I can't think yeah. of, I can never not think of Sankofa and not think about him. Right, absolutely. You know, because he's absolutely. the first person absolutely. that made me understand what Sankofa meant. Yeah. Right, my DC hangout, right. No, yeah. no, and, and I appreciate, you know, you, you allow for me to ask the, the, the mother, um, you know, about that because, and I, I would hope you said in a month, so that's beautiful because we will be down in the last stop is Memphis uh, uh, this year with the Freedom Ride. So I'm hoping we can have a bus to bus connection there <laughs> if, <laughs> if you you know if, if you're up to it and operational uh, during that time. Uh, but so, but to answer uh, the question in terms of uh, what challenges I believe you, you may have uh, or we may have. Ultimately, I believe that everything rises and falls on leadership and mm -hmm. the wisdom of our leaders is what, how, how can I say this? We must learn, of course, from our wise elders and ancestors. I'm currently I'm almost done with this, reading this book here. It's uh, Prada Barutis. His book is called A Warrior's Character. And, A Warrior's Character. and I keep going back to that because I feel that if we are in our, in our right character, everything else will just manifest for us, right? Our, you know, standing on the principles of my eye, if you will, but continuing to understand the the world around us. And this is what, you know, actually traveling has done, you know, for me in terms of, I mean, although I, I've read hundreds of books without traveling, even, you know, during the, the, uh, the Southern tour, but definitely the global aspects, it, it, it transformed my, my thoughts you know, yes. more than I thought I was mm -hmm. super conscious, right? But, you know, traveling yeah. actually made me pay attention more to what's going on in the world and how it affects us here. So now it's like, I mean, I recall even when a brother was trying to tell me about COVID and, I, and I'm, I'm ref, you know, he's like, brother, you need to pay attention because we are like survival trainer type of people. He was like, uh -huh. you need to pay attention to, to what's going on in China and I, and you know, and, and now that I reflect on it, I don't think that I was as consciously paying attention to it, you know, like, like how serious of an issue was this? So it just made me realize how global issues affect us locally. And, uh, and I always, uh, have a belief that we need to Think globally and act locally. That's a little slogan that people use. So, right. <laughs> and Queen, Queen Mother was asking about the book. So I was just, I just wanted to, so the full title is uh, From the Browder File, 22 Essays on the African-American uh, Experience from the Browder oh, File yes. Series. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. So that's the full title. Yeah, and, that one I don't have yet, but I will get it. Yeah, I think, <laughs> essays, yeah. The, I think that was the original okay. and then it came out with later editions. Yes. Uh, yeah. And it was um, it was very interesting because I I had written the play and I had never met Tony. And uh, one of the performers said she knew him personally and she could invite him to the show. Oh, that would be great. I'd be, I'd be so honored, right? Because I never had a conversation with him. And so she, she had him come to the show and uh, we took pictures and he was, he was very humbled by the idea that, you know, the inspiration was such that his, his book and the writings was converted into this play that, you know, sort of 
branched out. And so we, you know, we got connected that way. And so I would go to the post office box every now and then, and it would be a, a new edition of the book. You would just, yeah. <laughs> you know, send it out. So I felt very honored that um, mm -hmm. he was very accepting, because that's not always been the case. I can share some other stories with you. That's not always been the case. So he was very accepting and understanding that it was about the, the message. It was about the knowledge. You know, it wasn't yeah. you know, intended at any given time to sort of, you know, profits and, you know, we're out here. No, it was about the information, as Dick Gregory would say, the knowledge of, of passing it on. And Tony was so mm -hmm. gracious about that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. wonderful experience. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, I remember it's funny that you talked about that high key about uh, during COVID and just kind of getting out because I actually went to Egypt during COVID. And I was like, when I was in Africa, I was like, oh, do they have COVID here? Like, they, yeah. nobody was walking around like, mm -hmm. like, they had, like there was no COVID. Right. You no know, there was no, there was no mask. It was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh my God, like I've been scared in the United States by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to Egypt and it was just like regular. I was like, oh, all right. You know, it was, yeah, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. right. um, In fact, while there yeah. for me, you know, right. I have my, my challenges health wise, um, being a cancer survivor and other surgeries that I've had. But when in, I was in Kemet, I had no symptoms at all. <laughs> I felt even more healthy than I did when I came back. And it's the sun. It's like the sun. Like you can get, a, if you go to like, like to the islands and you, you get a sun, like, a, um, you know, like so much sun on you, you, and then mm -hmm. when you come back, it starts peeling. Nothing happens when you go to Egypt. You get dark. But it doesn't peel like it's like so wild. I love it. Yeah, I love it. And they hands down have have the best watermelon, hands down. Hands down. Yeah, like that. I mean, it's really, it's really, really delicious. Um, yeah, I, I experienced that in Senegal, um, 2013, and um, I had a cut on my finger uh, from drumming, and um, so when I got to the Dakar, they said, "Oh." We have to take you to Pink Lake, and um, so Pink Lake in the car. Mm. At the, I guess at the at high noon, you know, when the sun is at its peak, um, and they were just they were just like people come from all over around the world, and they stick their feet in Pink Lake, their elbow, whatever is you know, mm. and they said when you go down, don't keep your hand in there long, just shh, shh. and sure enough, we went to Pink Lake. I put my hand in there and I tell you probably from 24 to 48 hours that cut I couldn't even begin to tell you what finger it was on oh Just my it right up so yeah I took it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've seen pictures. yeah I wasn't when I went to Senegal I didn't have a chance to get there but I've, I've seen pictures I was like that's a real thing <laughs> like it's like, you know, yeah this is like all, all of our treasures are just sitting there on the continent like for real mm -hmm. sitting there ready for us to discover mm. them and, you know, share them with each other. Um, okay, so um, I wanted to, um, I, this is about my last question for you guys. When you think about what you're building, what does the, what does the end game look like? Or, you know, mm. what does it look like when it's, when it's successful? Mm. Or like this, what does it look like when you just envision, you know, leaving it? What, what does it look like to you guys? I think, it looks like, I think it looks like longevity. Um, it looks like um, it's interesting you ask that question because mm -hmm. uh, my son, who's the youngest of three, asked me what time uh, asked me one time about the definition of success. At that time, he was playing basketball in high school, and, mm -hmm. and so very interesting question: What's the definition of success? And so. You know, I try to explain to him that when you get to a point in your life and you understand what your purpose is and uh, and you move forward in that purpose and you start making a difference, that is success. It's not, you know, it's not it's not defined by anybody else. You know, we, we get sort of, you know, so when he was in the basketball mode, you know, it's like everybody's got to go to the NBA and you know, who, who's defining that? That's. That's not defining your success. 
Yeah. Your success is once you acknowledge your purpose and what it is you're here to do, mm. and you set out to do it. That's success. It's no. It's not this big thing pie in the sky. Um, and so, to share that story, I'm not big. Queen Queen Mother mentioned something about um, writing grants, or you know, I mean, we are a nonprofit, 501c3 by the government, yada yada yada. So we could be we could be writing grants and fundraising and selling fish and doing car washes and all that, you know. <laughs> but but I, but I never believed in that because I think in some ways it kind of defines your your purpose. You know, it's like you write a grant and they say, ah, you didn't get it. And then all of a sudden you crush and you feel like, oh, why, you know, what's the meaning of life? So I figure as a nonprofit arts organization, we go out, we perform, we get paid, and now we control what we do with the, with the revenue, with the money. We can go into uh, underprivileged communities that don't necessarily have the budgets and and have the government's call and say, Who, who's funding, who's financing this? And he said, we, we're financing it. Mm -hmm. the money. And we can go into these mm. communities, Bill. We we controlling our own. So I'd say all that to say, you know, in the state of Maryland, um, there was something called the the Heritage Award, and I was made aware of this Heritage Award, and um, fairly large grant. And I just thought it had my name written all over it. <laughs> and you had to sort of you know, write about a tradition, like what is your tradition? What is your culture? Tell us what heritage you are writing about in this this application. So, you know, I wrote about the the hand drumming tradition, how, how important that is in our community, mm. that we hold on to that history. I, and um, and so, you know, me having, you know, been drumming all my life, here I am, you know, I'm a testimony to how important this hand drumming is, to the point where the drum was illegal, you know, Brothers were getting hanged for playing the drum and so forth. And I, 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 and I, yeah. I shared that in this application with video and reference letters and all. But at the very beginning, I claimed it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get this grant. But knowing that the people that were going to be sitting on the other side of the that are panelists, you had I had to tell the story. Like I had to tell the story in such a way that they could embrace it and understand mm -hmm. the commitment and the importance of maintaining this tradition. So that was in October. They said you, they would let you know in February. And sure enough, you know, I get this phone call. <laughs> and the guy said, I'm so happy to tell you, like, you've been selected for this grant. And I was speechless. It wasn't about the money. It wasn't about. It was about the institutional stick to itiveness, if that's a word to say. Because if I had written that twenty years ago, it would have gone on deaf ears. We weren't as a society. We weren't there yet to, to explain that story to a panel. People on the other side and have them think that this was even important. Mm. And now, I was just tickled pink because I'm thinking, you know what? One. I was able to write the story, mm. tell the story, and have these people that don't necessarily know what this culture is understand it and be impacted by it and say, you know what, this is worthy of winning this award. You, you could give me a dollar. It's just because that's, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that is. Yeah, they saw the humanity. They saw the, they saw the, you were able to articulate the humanity. It's, it's it's about the growth and yeah. so wow. and that you know and that just comes from all the work all the growth all the the knowledge and the information coming together yeah. and you know it, i think to wrap up this whole thing it really is we got we have to grow in it and then it's because of those years of commitment that we can tell the story mm -hmm. tell it in such Indeed. a way convincingly because it's not a story anymore. It's becomes the life. It becomes we live it. And yeah, it's the reality. Yeah. 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 The manifestation of it. Yeah. So that's, so that's very sort of encouraging in the site. You know, it's so funny you say the living of it. You know, I was having a conversation with Taki and we were talking about this idea of hobby, hobby, hobby. And then, you know, at one, mm -hmm. you know, then it eventually just kind of dawned on us that we also need to we need to live this. 
we, you know, we need to be about it. You know, it's not just about sharing this information, but it's about us being a model for this information. Like if we don't believe it, then who else is going to believe it? Mm -hmm. You know? And young people mm -hmm. are very, mm -hmm. young people aren't so much impressed about what you say. They're impressed about what you do. They're watching us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Watch this when we don't even know we can watch. You could talk to them to the cows home. They are impressed with that. Right. True. They impressed with watching you and you don't know that they're watching you. Oh, and, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So you got to be about, you got to really be about it all the yeah. time. You got to be living Indeed. it. Right? Indeed. Yeah. More from that, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the end game for me, Felicia yeah. and Michael and Haki, um, it, it's not about fame, fortune, or notoriety. It's not that. The end game is uh, showing others that they can control, they have control of their destiny. Mm. Taking control of your destiny and expanding this vision, not only nationally, but internationally. I can, I can travel to Tanzania with a bus and teach Africans some ancient history that they may not have gotten in there in in the con on the continent and and i've heard people say that there there are africans that don't know their ancient history yeah. so yeah. the end game is this phenomenal journey that one will have and uh an experience of uniqueness in an educational setting that's the end game. That's the vision. And then ultimately the brick and mortar institution of Ma'at Sankofa around the world. Mm, expansion. Okay. Yes. All right. All right, Queen Mother. That's what's up. That's all right. Haki, what does it look like? What does it look like to you? Well, earlier, Brother Michael mentioned uh, legacy, uh, ultimately, I think that that is the definition. And if Felicia, if you have that legacy tour, I think you showed it a little earlier, if you could pull that up. Oh, as yes. kind of, thank you. Thank you. Uh, ultimately, for me, it's, it's about having, you know, once it's said and done, it's about did I or we matter individually, first and foremost? Mm -hmm. How did we actually matter in this existence? And that's ultimately how we have to define our existence. That's one of them. There's another one I was thinking about, but that's, that's an investment towards uh, three countries. It's like a brownish, okay. yellowish color, uh, sister uh, Felicia. But um, okay, because I showed it before, right? When we speak right? about legacy, you did, mm -hmm. you did, correct. When when we speak about legacy, uh, and living life with no regrets, like ultimately, feeling like that we've done all in our power to create a vision that others can take forward for us while we, you know, as, as time go on, we, we may not have the physical capacity, if, if you will, to, that's the freedom rights, but there's one more. You know, <laughs> okay, apparently, you know, apparently um, I don't, I, I'm so. apparently I can't, and, I can't figure this out. <laughs> Wait, wait, you got a lot, you got a lot of little stuff over you here. Had, you had it up the earth. <laughs> I had one with the yeah. woman. I, I said three. I said legacy three. Four. The legacy. Oh, here it is. Yes, the legacy. Yes, Mama, Mama Ade. Yes. Right, right, right. right. So there so, you go. Yes, that so that's me. And that's Mama Ade. She is a uh queen mother. I'm sorry, no, she's a king in Benin. And she is a uh, Ifa priest as well. And oh. one thing happened like our second time in Tanzania, we actually had four, I have to share, share this, four Ifa priests. This perhaps was the first time 
that this has happened in Tanzania. Mama Ia Marie, you, Baba Michael, you know Ia Marie, right? In DC? Yes. Okay, okay, yeah, Mama Ia Marie, Mama Rashida, uh, and this Mama Ade, she's from Cleveland, and uh, Mama C, who's actually a Black Panther that uh, lived in, she left the United States and lived in Tanzania for like 50 years. And so mm. ultimately in coding, I'll just say that, you know, creating a legacy uh, for our uh, Watotos, if you will, for our children and our children's children mm -hmm. so that we can have something to show for our existence. Right. So mm -hmm. I'll just close with that. But thank you for sharing that, that uh, picture right there. <laughs> Yeah. Um, wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm, thank, mm -hmm. thank you for that. Um, listen, I can't wait to see what this looks like just in like another year. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what, what you guys next year, you're doing 40 years, right? Um, Michael? Uh, yeah, we're doing 40 years and uh, we're going to do our traditional 40 year in Maryland, but uh, okay. we're going to take our 40th anniversary to Puerto Rico. Oh, uh, and uh, yeah, Jody and I went last last year for a poetry retreat, and uh, called the Mariposa Poetry, poetry Retreat. Mm. Something I supported for I don't know almost twenty years. And uh, the sister who coordinates it, Maritza Rivera, is from Puerto Rico. So we we went, and the experience was incredible. I posted some of this stuff on Facebook. Yeah, I remember seeing. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, in the city of Louisa on the island, they are preserving the African culture uh, right there in Puerto Rico. And before we left, mm -hmm. I just told Jody, I said, you know what, we're going to do the 40th anniversary here. I mean, we have to connect the dots. We have wow. to connect the dots from our African culture, from, from the mainland, go to Puerto Rico and just really kind of embrace that culture that I think a lot of people don't realize is, is, is there. Like, we have folks yeah. that are preserving the African culture mm -hmm. on the island. And um, so, yeah, so that's what, that's the mm -hmm. plan. And okay. if it's one person, three people, Perfect. eight people, not, you know, it doesn't matter. We we will be there. You know, I might, I might have to start getting my little dance. Let Pam know. Let Pam know. The national piece for the soul of motion. <laughs> Pam. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah, I love Pam. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, yeah, it's really that's fantastic. And yeah, the things that we learned, you know, in the pockets, yeah, it was incredible. It was just, I mean, who knew? I mean, I, I wasn't aware that you know that we had that sort of stronghold and the, and, the, and the information that we learned. I mean, who knew that barbecue started in Puerto Rico, right? When you think about barbecue, you hear about Texas and the we. Mm -hmm. It actually started mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico. <laughs> that wow. barbecue, yeah. And so they wow. tell you the history of it, and right, and tell you the history of it, and, and the original name of barbecue and the processing of the meat and all that. Yeah, you never hear that story. You never hear yeah. that history. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah. I'm about to. I'm about to do. I'm about to hit all y'all up. I'm going to Puerto Rico next year with you. I'm definitely going to hit Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Tanzania. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be on Tan um, in Tampa because I'm going to see the hologram close up. Mm. Yes. I'm just, yeah, yes, yes. there it is. Um, I'm going with you, yes. Felicia. We need some some of that sun down there. That's for sure. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I can't. Yeah, I love something. And, and the idea of the village. This is for you, sort of a side story. Mm -hmm. um, so if you edit this, have to edit this out. That's fine. But I have to tell this story. So I'm not going to call out any organizations. Or any, but we was we were celebrating our 25th anniversary. So that's been almost 15 years ago. Okay. And um, and I talked to Felicia, and I said, "You won't believe what these people did. Like they they canceled our week long celebration." Yeah. because they didn't think that we could put butts in the seats and so they just took took it off the schedule and we were we mm -hmm. were down to one day which was saturday and i just knew that we, we were going to sell this place out but the thing about it was they they didn't honor their commitment at all and one of the commitments was concessions like selling food and dr providing drink 
And that's I'm telling Felicia about it. And she's like, I am on my way down there right now. And I will have the kids and concessions and chips and soda and whatever you need. <laughs> and she showed up in Maryland and she's got out, you know, and I, and so yeah, it was and the name of that show, believe it or not, was Make History Now. It was 2018, it was the year that yes, yeah. Barack became president, right? Before we before yeah. he became president. But it was just, just important to appeal to the community to say, hey, don't sit back and tomorrow say, oh, I wish I had been there. Yeah. No, no, come out because it's, after tonight, it's going to be history. Yes. So make history now. It, and how, yeah, <laughs> we didn't know, right, the impact that that was really going to have and, you know, yeah. the, you know, society stepping up and voting in President Obama. But, you know, it's just one of those things that you experience in the, you know, in all the many years that I got, I got a ton of stories like that. But yeah, it was incredible. But Felicia to the rescue. Yeah. <laughs> I always love, I, look, I'll ride out. Look, you tell me, let's go. I'm, I'm about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I think about, um, that is so true. It, you know, like people are always kind of, there's some things that people reference, like, oh, the, you know, the Dubian Conference or the da da da, da 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 And I'm like, those are great. Those are in the past. We have these things going on right now. So you want mm -hmm. to, so something comes up, make your way to, to do it. Because sometimes when, when, when Black people see other Black folks, just them seeing you is, is enough. You know, you just, you walk into the door, especially sometimes if you're in a space where it's not a lot of you guys. So when you're doing something, you see, you know, your 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 family, your crew come through, you're like, yes, like you need that. So yeah, so support is always, mm -hmm. like there's no way, I tell everybody, there's no way we could we could do anything without the support of, you know, of, of everyone out here. Mm -hmm. And everyone that's in the chat, everyone, you know, like all the people that are sitting here on this panel, like mm -hmm. you can't even do this without that support. So. Yeah, there's, there's a great book for folks who are mm -hmm. readers. It just came out. It's called Jimbe Revolution, and it's written by uh, Kojo Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the birth of birth of the Jimbe in America, and um, oh. I got it on my Kindle, and um, wow. it's pretty incredible because it talks about the history of the Jimbe from Africa and how it really sort of changed the perception of the drums that we were playing, which were congas, which were coming from Cuba, and that sort of, uh, you know, Afro-Cuban connection, but, mm -hmm. and it talks about how it all really kind of started in New York City. And it gives the names and the interviews of people, and, and so being from Philadelphia, it really shined a light on how we were impacted by that. I, like I said, I grew up in Arthur Hall, Ile Ife, but the connection from Arthur Hall back to New York and all these people, mm -hmm. uh, Catherine Dunham and that connection and all that, that. Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. It's a history. I mean, this brother did a great job of documenting it, interviewing people who are ancestors now and talking wow. about the connection from Chicago to Philadelphia to, you know, Baltimore to DC. And, can, and and it's so the things that I'm learning in the book about Arthur Hall, I thought Arthur was from Philadelphia. He wasn't from Philadelphia. How he ended up in Philadelphia became sort of the guy in in in, in you know African dance and how he got his place in Philadelphia. But connecting back to New York and the, it's yeah, Jim Bay Revolution by Kojo Bay. Jim okay. Powerful. Kojo. Kojo mm. Bay. Yeah, I, oh, I love it. it was, as soon as you started talking about the connection, I kept thinking about Africa. How all you know, once you start seeing like this, this you know, this connection, you're like, oh, okay, you know, yeah. It just, it, yeah, it makes you feel so much stronger. Yeah, the Africans were constructing these drums with, um, you know, they would heat them up with with heat and sun and mm -hmm. all these things, and how they constructed it, and it was all rope, and uh, the idea that. African Americans took the djembe and remanufactured it, how it's really presented now to the point where when the Africans found out about it, it was just like, wow. I mean, mm -hmm. African Americans have taken our drum and sort of restructured to how we tune it, how we make it higher, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. and it was it's incredible to hear the story. It's like, wow. So they they really embraced the, sort of the, the technology 
that African Americans put on the on this this history mm-hmm. drum to tune it almost like a conga, but not with tuning metal, but really just take it. Mm-hmm. They talk about the brother in New York. He was a he worked for you know some company in the, the, the metros, whatever it is, the train. And he was able to weld her, and he was, came up with the idea of being able to weld these. Uh, it, wow. Like, <laughs> wow. I tell you, I tell you, people, you know what the <laughs> doctor over the shaka says it the best when he says, you know, our genius is our creativity. Mm. Our genius is our creativity. Mm, yeah. Wow. And to be multi-talented on top mm-hmm. of that as well. I, I I embraced the music, the drums, the dancing. I play piano. Mm-hmm. I've played cello. I've played a lot of, you know, several different instruments. And I try playing the drums, but that's kind of a difficult feat for me. But not mm-hmm. the Congos, though, but they mm-hmm. fascinate me. Mm-hmm. And I've heard the still drummers as well from Trinidad and that's a whole other different sound and how they use those steel drums to yeah. make sound. Oh, it's incredible. Mm. I love music. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. I want I want to show the brother. I got this from Panama, <laughs> Baba. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't recall what it's called, but it's a, uh, uh, it, wow. it, so yeah, the early African Spanish like inquisition yeah. there so yeah but um, yes so i was yes, in Panama yeah. last summer well, beautiful it's got a, it's yeah. got a head on both ends so right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's beautiful wow. well it's true <laughs> that music is a universal yeah. language so yeah you can't you know what if, if i mm-hmm. we were I, I forgot where i was and there was like drums in the background so i was talking to somebody but i just kept like moving because you can't, you can't like not listen to drums and not move. And if you, and if you don't move, I think something's wrong with you. I'm like, okay, oh, they, they might not be black. They may not got the spirit. Because <laughs> right. automatically, yeah. something on your body has to connect to that. Like there's no, no way out of it. Like the vibration. Yeah, it just it's the vibration mm. that touches your soul. Yeah, it goes all the way. You can't help but move. When we were on the live stream. Uh, at the, uh, you know, the conference, man, the drummers, I was out of my seat here in my office, you know, just going with it. All oh, those drummers, yeah, it was yeah. incredible. It, it came really through. Not. Yeah, this yeah. technology can't stop it either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a, yeah, they were um, the one of our, our co-sponsors, um, uh, um, Yao, that's his name, and he owns a um, he has a non for profit called uh, KQ or Ki, Ki, Kiku. I think that's the name. I hope I'm not messing it up. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it uh, in our description the correct way. But um, he was like, you know, he's like, Oh, I'm bringing the drummers, I'm adding it, blah blah blah. So we're like, Okay, you know, we didn't have solo motion player money, but trust <laughs> to believe <laughs> we had some solo motion player money, you know, it was gonna be right there. But yeah, it's like, okay. and then like, and then it's like when you guys, when you follow the people with the drums, I'm like, what are you doing? Like this one woman, she just couldn't even, mm. she became a whole different person. And in fact, when I saw her later on in the conference, she asked me, she's like, did you videotape me? And I was like, oh, everyone videotaped me. You mm. were, we were live streaming you dancing. And she mm-hmm. looked at it. She was like, mm. she, didn't, she didn't have a recollection yeah. of her doing all these little movements and she's an older woman i was like girl you have to sit down and do a little epsom salt tomorrow because yeah. your little body trust me you have to sit down in a little tub with that um she was getting it in yeah. one, of the, one of the heaviest lyrics i ever heard was by a sister from armenia uh sarah baranian and um i was working at the discovery channel at the time so it was back in the 90s and she came we had a conversation. She goes, oh, you're a musician. I'm going to bring in a cassette. This was before CDs, right? I'm going to bring my cassette in and let you listen to this song I wrote called The Drum. Okay. So she gives it to me. I go out in the parking lot and I put it in my, my car and I'm listening to it. And the lyric that jumped out from this was, uh, I'm going to paraphrase this. It was really about how could these people enslave other people how could they put chains on people how could they you know 
so on and so forth. And she goes down mm -hmm. that, that, and the hook to the lyric was, how could they do all these things? They do not play the drum. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm. wow. Because mm. most mm. all cultures have a drum. Mm. Balls around the drum. And she had come to terms to say, they were able to do all these things because they do not play the drum. They're on a low frequency, a low vibration. Yeah, so. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. That's unfortunate but, for mm. them, though. Yeah, that's right. And so for her as a, as a lyricist to be able to make that connection, yeah. back to music, back to drumming, the power of the drum, she goes, they, don't, they do not play the drum. <laughs> yeah, I like, like that. Yeah. do not play the drum. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Listen, family, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to put you guys in the green room. Don't sign off yet. Just okay. For a second. Um, but thank it's you. It's a so pleasure. Much. Yeah, yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you get the dream team up in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, the dream team family. Um, so listen, um, make sure, uh, you know, just some little housekeeping stuff, guys. Uh, make sure that you are liking and you shared this video, like uh, Jabari always says that you had to share, you had to send the video to at least three other people. I don't know why three, we got to ask King Simon the significance of the number three, but he's always like, you got to send it to three other people. Um, and, you know, thank you for um, any, you know, um, the cash app love you guys were showing us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you are not connected. So this is the other thing, you know, we have, um, you know, we really want to see what's going on in the community and what people are doing. So a good way to get connected and to, you know, kind of start dialogue with us is by making sure that you are signed up for the newsletter. If you just go to happyfilm.com, hit, click, uh, click the stay connected button, make sure your email address is in there and we'll put you onto the website. I mean, excuse me, we will add you onto the email list. We have all these articles that um, we have a financial article, uh, like financial 101 news, we also have an economic innovator, someone from the past who's laid the foundation for us, um, uh, you know, such as like a Booker T. Washington. That's someone. He is an economic innovator. He has laid the foundation for us to walk in right now. Um, but we also have happy news in there. We uh, showcase a black business. We have a health article. Um, and this happens, uh, you know, every month we put out this newsletter. So, you know, family, make sure that you are connected. And even if you want to write for the newsletter, um, our, our um, information is um, uh, info. You, you can actually email me at info hoppy film at Gmail, or you, once you send on to the newsletter, our, our, you know, information is right there. You can get at us, but um, it's very important to stay connected because when we move and we do things, we want to be able to say, okay, look, this is happening over here, you know, and, and send out information and make sure that the family, um, you know, receives. It's very uh, super important that that happens. Um, and also, listen, you know, you can also go to happyfilm.com. We have a lots of merchandise. And one of the things that one of our guests didn't talk about, but if you guys hit hit up my um, my um, IG page, I had one of Michael friends started selling hoodies. And if you guys know, I have like a, um, uh, my hoodie collection is inappropriate at this point. I think I'm pushing 50 something hoodies. Yes, it's not a good look. But I, I had to. I had. I added two more in the, in the last like month. One was from Michael's um, Solar Motion Players, and then our. Um, and then the one that I have on today is the Hoppy, the Hoppy hoodie. Yeah. And listen, you guys need to stop me if in the summertime I got this hoodie on, still doing shows. But um, I'm telling you now, you know, it is so important that we support people who are doing the work. Okay. And if supporting is volunteering, if supporting is throwing them some money, if supporting is showing up, telling other people about their organization, all of those things are things that when you are creating something that you need to help you to keep going on. So family, please make sure that you are um, looking within yourself to see how can you help with the community. Um, and maybe you have an idea. And, the, only, and the, the easiest way to get help with your ideas is to actually help somebody else. I tell my kids that all the time, you know, is that you got to be out there doing the thing that you want to happen. So, um, so family, just, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you for um, uh, the support of the Hoppy Movement. 
And, uh, you know, I'm always like, I love when Professor Small comes on, you know, but the only sad thing about it is that when he comes on, he takes my, 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 my saying, well, it's actually his saying, I take his, but I don't, I don't get to say it, but he's not here. So I get to say it. So family, peace and blessings. I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our communities?